All right, we're continuing on with our splayed dovetail stool. I've gone ahead and cut the corners on my cherry piece and one corner on my curly piece, and I'm ready to cut the last one. I have my uh, dovetails transferred. Um, and what I'd like to show you is uh, the process of cutting them, but also uh, how different saws affect your cut. This is a question I get in class a lot. Uh, what saw is the best saw? And really, it's what saw is best for you. My favorite saw is the Veritas 20 TPI uh, dovetailing saw. I really like it. Uh, the characteristics you want in any dovetailing saw is you want a relatively short blade depth and a rigid spine. And I really like uh, how they have the rigid spine. I think it's like a carbon fiber. Uh, you can look it up. Uh, maybe some of you might know more about the saw. I can list something in the comments below. Um, but it makes it really lightweight. It's a comfortable feel. And I've had this saw for years now, and it, it still cuts like a dream. Um, when you're using this type of saw, you're going to want to take a particular stance. You essentially want to turn perpendicular to the piece, and you want to draw the saw back almost like you were drawing uh, back an arrow in a bow. Um, the reason for that is you want the saw to clear your chest. If you were sitting over the piece, and a lot of people sit over it so they can see better, and then trying to make the cut, you're going to end up rocking as your hand clears your chest. And this can cause a gap that wouldn't otherwise happen. It, it's also just less ergonomic. If you take that wide stance drawing back, you're not going to tire as quickly. Another important point is you're going to want to hold the piece like sort of like a pistol grip. You're going to want this index finger extended over this part of the saw. It's going to give you control as you start your cut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple of my pins uh, with this saw so you can see what it's like. So when I'm cutting my pins, I need to make sure that I line up on the 14 degrees, and then I'm cutting, I'm angling my blade at 14 degrees and then dropping straight down at 90. Uh, every time I use this type of saw, I uh, make a couple of saw curves. I draw back a few times to get a trough to start out with. And now that I have a good trough established, I'm going to cut straight down. I'm going to watch, uh, I'm, remember we're cutting at an angle here, so I'm going to stop when I hit that marking gauge scribe on each side. Okay, I've hit the marking gauge scribe here. I'm going to go to the other side. And then even that out, pull back. You can hear the nice even flow of that cut. I mean, I'm really not struggling at any point. Uh, one thing I do like, you might not see that I'm doing is like as I make my forward cut, I'm leaning into it, almost like the way a boxer leans into a punch. You're going to get your body weight behind it, and it just makes the cuts go smoother. You can cut a lot of them without tiring. I'm going to go ahead and cut uh, a couple more, and then I'll show you another saw. All right, so that's my favorite saw. Uh, I'd like to show you this saw. This is a gent saw. A lot of people think of this as sort of an entry-level saw, and I think they think that because it's essentially half the price of that Veritas saw. It's still a good quality saw, and w the difference, I think, is your stance when you're using it. That's really the difference with each of these saws. The Gent saw, remember on the Veritas saw how we put our finger to the side? On the Gent saw, we're going to put our finger on the top. That's how we're going to get a control as we start our cut. And it's a different... Uh, I suppose with the Veritas saw, we're taking a wider stance. We're using, we're sort of getting our control in the back of our arm. On the gent saw, all of our control is in our forearm. And so if you're cutting a lot of dovetails, if you're cutting dovetails for like a high boy or something where you're really going to be cutting a lot, I don't recommend this saw because your forearm tires out really fast. Uh, with the Veritas saw, uh, you're using a larger muscle group. You're able to throw your weight into the saw, and you can cut a lot of dovetails a lot faster. But if you have trouble seeing, if you're nearsighted, or if you're just you know, not confident about being on your line, this is the saw for you because it allows you to get right on top of the cut without it interfering, sort of like, remember I said it, the other saw needs to clear your chest when you take that wide body stance. This lets you take a narrower stance, get right on top of the dovetail and really see if you're on the line. So I don't think this as, think of this as a beginner saw. I think of this as a saw who, for people who uh, really need to see their line or a little bit, little bit less confident about their placement. Um, but not good if you're cutting a lot of dovetails. So let's go ahead and cut this, the other side of this pin. And you'll see I can, get my, I can get right on top of it. I'm not far away. I can see very clearly if, my, if the teeth are set on, the, on my uh, 
knife mark. I'm going to do a couple cuts and then a little tougher they get started because I can't throw my weight behind it. When you're getting started, sort of rock it back and then lean in as much as you can with your arm. So you can see I had a little tougher time starting the cut, but I was really able to see how the teeth were set. So a good, a good saw depending on how you cut your dovetails. Now let's move on to the Japanese saw. The Japanese woodworking tradition is an amazing tradition. It's a very different tradition and one of the big difference that, differences that a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of it's built around working at a seated bench. That's why a lot of the planes and the saw work on a pull stroke. Different than the other saws I've shown you that work on the push stroke. Uh, and what the, again, what this, what this changes is how you hold the saw and how you stand when you're using the saw. I think a lot of people want to use the Japanese saw because they're so nicely made and it gives you a very thin kerf, uh, but they get frustrated when it, it just doesn't work like the other saws they've used. So let me show you how I like to use the Japanese saw. I like to set the blade and you'll notice I'm standing here. I have the handle of the saw right up against my waist, a lot like the way you would hold a turning tool. Um, I'm sort of, as I do this, I'm going to be pulling in and pulling it towards my center. It's almost sort of like a little bit of an ab workout. You're pulling it inward and using your whole body thrusting towards yourself as you're making the cut. And it actually gives you an incredible amount of control because it's very much at the center of your body. Um, when I set my saw, I'm still going to need to do a couple of curves, but instead of pulling it towards me, I'm going to push. And you can see I'm kind of leaning into it. My whole body is leaning into it as I set the blade. And it, it is nice working with such a thin blade. Once I have that set, I'm going to start pulling it towards me. I made a nice smooth cut, it was very comfortable to make the cut, and I felt like I had a good amount of control, keeping it straight on 90 degrees, uh, and a lot of that came from the blade being against the side of my body. So, uh, an, and another thing that people like about these is they're often made so you can very easily replace the blade and not have to have it sharpened. Um, a great saw. So those are three types of saws. I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of my cuts with my favorite saw, the Veritas dovetailing saw. And in the next video, I'll show you how to get the waste out in between using our jeweler's saw and a couple of tricks. See you in the next video. Subscribe for more woodworking videos.